everybody, Stu, AG6AG. I get all sorts of great questions for my friends out here in Ventura County, and I get great requests via email uh, to show different things on my videos. This uh, was a request from a friend of mine named Jim. Uh, let's see, his call is KM6GUE, and he was asking, hey, how do I automatically bring my QSOs in from WSJTX into Logbook uh, for Old Men without having to export and import and everything else? So guess what, Jim? This one's for you. Oh, and while I'm thinking of it, do me a favor and click the subscribe button, will you? If you click that and the bell, you'll get to see all my videos first up. So just uh, go ahead. You know you want to. With that, on with the show. Well, welcome to another part of our Log for Old Man series. You know what? This is really cool. This is one of the features I really like about Log for Old Men. Here, we're going to show how you can run FL Digi and or WSJTX. And after you make a QSO, have that immediately be imported into uh, log for all men or after you're all done you can actually just launch log for all men and it will go ahead and do exactly that it will import all of those QSOs automatically no more trying to export an ADIF or copy an ADIF over or do this or do that it will all be automatic and what that allows to happen is if you're uploading to Logbook of the World or QRZ or Club Log or whatever automatically in Logger for Old Men, you'll be able to automatically do the same with all your uh, FL Digi and all of your WSJTX connections, right? FT8, Logbook of the World, auto upload. Well, let's check it out. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we've completely set up our um, logbook, of the, uh, logbook for Old Men. We want to make sure that we have all the imports and everything else set up. There are, as an example of setting up Logbook uh, for Old Men to automatically export directly into Logbook of the World, uh, I encourage you to watch that video. You're probably going to want to set that up beforehand so you don't have to go through some of the automatic export or some of the other settings you may have to mess with down the road on uh, the way we do this import. And let me also remind you that there are lots of ways to do this import. Okay, uh, You can do it directly through port connections, all sorts of different ways. The best way that I've found is to have it troll the ADIF file that is created by each of those programs and automatically import it in. The big advantage is if you forget to launch Logbook of the World, or excuse me, I keep saying that, if you forget to launch Logbook for Old Men and you're inside of FLDG or WSJTX and you make QSOs, it doesn't matter because the next time you launch Logbook for Old Men, it is going to be there and ready to go. So there are some of the important points that we need to talk about. Let's talk about settings now. So we're going to go up here to settings. We're going to go to our program configuration. And my assumption is you've got all this stuff configured. You're currently using FL Digi. You're currently using WSJTX. You're currently using Logbook for Old Men. You have all this stuff working, and what you're trying to do is interface it. If, if this stuff isn't working for you, pause this video or stop it and go to how to install all this stuff and get it working. I have previous videos on all this. Check them out. I try to do these as quickly as possible. You can fast forward through my random talk if you want, but there's some nitty-gritty nitty stuff that you really want to pay attention to. Okay. Um, let's go ahead. We're going to scroll on down. And there's a couple sections at the bottom of the configuration here that we want to talk about. One, of course, is software integration, and the other is applications. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, first off, applications, you notice we have FL Digi and we have WSJTX and JTDX listed down here. I can highlight this and you see start service. This will actually listen for direct communication with FL Digi. 
as well as the one for WSJTX and JTDX. And they talk about round robin and all sorts of other ways you can make all these network connections work. For me, too complicated. I have to make sure everything's turned on. I got to make sure everything's working. I got to make sure everything's talking before I can even make a cue. So I don't want to worry about that. All right. What I want to do is I want to just look at the QSO records. I mean, it's not a QSO till I save it into the WSJTX or the FL Digi log, right? So uh, Logbook of the World isn't going to care what frequency I'm on or anything else until I get there. Uh, so I'm going to look under software integration. I'm going to look under ADIF functions. And there's a couple different things. I mean, we can do ADIF posts in here. We can do an automatic ADIF output. But what we want to look at is the ADIF monitor. Okay, and what this does is it trolls your log files that are created by the two programs we're talking about and automatically downloads them. And, hey, bonus, I mean, you can do this on other programs that do create an ADIF log. After all, FL Digi and um, WSJTX don't have a you know a, a, a exclusively uh, any exclusive uh, any exclusiveness to doing that. Wow, that was hard to say. Anyway, so first thing we want to make sure we do right out the gate is I want to click Enable ADIF Monitor because if I don't do that, everything I'm doing here doesn't matter because it's not going to monitor the ADIF. Next. I want to tell it what ADIF files I want to grab. So let's start with FL Digi. I'm going to click on the little folder icon here, and a box is going to pop up. And I'm going to go to this PC. I'm going to go to my C drive. I'm going to go to Users, my username. And under here is an fldigi.files folder. Now, if you didn't mess with your installation, that's where all your personal configuration and log files are for FL Digi. All right, now let's double click on the log folder. We have a file in here called log AD or logbook ADI, and this is our logbook. Now I'm going to click on open, and it's going to pop it right in here. So let's talk a little bit. Um, so here's an issue. Let's say that you have oh, two or 3,000 logbook entries that are in FL Digi. Uh, you probably don't, but let's say you already do, okay? Well, this is going to attempt to import them all in, right? Because they're brand new. So you may need to do some doctoring if these have already been placed in your main log that you're using, right? Um, if not, you know, then great. You're going to get them all in in one fell swoop. Okay, this particular file I know has four QSOs. Are they important QSOs? Well, obviously they're not in my log. So I'm going to say, first off, uh, I'm not going to delete any of the data in this file before I start. Or, better yet, I am not going to change the logbook name in settings so I import these into a different logbook. And I'm not going to turn off all of the automatic upload stuff that goes with that. All right. This is the only kind of complicated thing. Now, for the most part, if they are duplicate, it shouldn't import them, okay? It should just say duplicate record not imported, all right? So let's go ahead and continue. In my case, I'm just going to import everything. I'm going to hope that if there's any dupes, which I know there aren't because it's an empty log, but if there's any dupes, it's going to ID them. So I'm going to say, go ahead and upload QSO to external source. If I say that, uh, it will, after it uploads, automatically upload it to Logbook of the World or QRZ or whatever I might have configured. Um, so you probably want to check that. Delete a diff file after I load it. Well, probably not, right? There's de uh, details in those a diff files from these programs you may want to keep around, you know, especially with WSJTX because that gives you your previously worked and all that stuff. So you don't want to wipe that file out every time that you upload it. And uh, import only QSOs that contain station call sign. That basically means if you're, you know, attaching to a log that multiple people are sharing, if you're not the operator in there, then it won't import it. That's a little beyond scope, and I'm not going to worry about that. In our particular case, we are going to upload QSOs to external services, and we're just going to leave it at that. Now, 
uh, all of this good stuff. I am just going to click the plus sign and it's going to put it here and it's going to say enabled and auto upload. Now, if I delete this, okay, I can hit minus and delete. I got to highlight it, delete. Okay. Let's say I don't want it to automatically upload. If I hit the plus sign now, it's not going to say auto upload. Okay. In here. All right. So from here, I'm going to leave it so it doesn't auto upload just in case I made a mistake. I don't have any uh, auto setups, but these have already been applied. I'm going to go ahead now and hit save and apply. Okay. And now that whole process is going to start, but let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this down. Then I'm going to open it back up. And I'm going to have this test all of our patients waiting for it to import all the marvelous stuff that we've added here. So let's give it a minute. And remember, I said you don't have to put them in directly while it's all hooked up because it will go out and pull that file and auto-read this information in. Now, of course, it's not immediate that it does this because it actually has to go sense the length of the file and everything else. But eventually this, oh, there it goes. There are those four QSOs that were in that log magically appearing. It also does lookups and everything else against them as well, which is kind of cool. So let's go ahead. We've got another one to configure that's a little bit more complicated. And you know what? That actually is going to be our, if we go down here and go to our ADIF functions, we are going to add WSJTX. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to have to go, and I'm going to take you all the way from the start just in case. We need to double click on our C drive. We need to double click on users. We need to double click on our username. Now we're going to click up in the top, right? We're going to click a second time to remove the highlight. What we have here is C users, and in my case, Stu, my username. I'm going to put a backslash. I'm going to type in app app, okay, D A T A, app data, and I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to be presented with three directories. Now, remember, that's under Stu or your name, okay, which is in Stu, app data. And let's double click on local. And we see all sorts of really cool stuff in here, but really important. Way down at the bottom, we have WSJT-X. We're going to double click on that. And right in this directory, we have the WSA, uh, WSJT x underscore log file. We're going to highlight that. And we're going to click OK. Same rules apply here. Do we want to automatically upload it? Do we want to delete it afterwards? All that good stuff. If it was normal setup for me um, and it wasn't a secondary log, I'd say upload immediately to my external sources, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to click the plus sign here and bada bing bada boom. We've now added that. You notice it says enable. Right, and it's checked. I'm going to hit save and apply. Now, theoretically, my, my patience might just pay off here if I leave this running. Let's see. I may have to shut it down and restart it. But this thing actually, since it's trolling these files, it should go out and find that WSJTX file that's full of QSOs. Let's see. And there we go. And it's going to upload all of these QSOs all by itself. Pretty cool, huh? Now, that's all you got to do. This works on the back side. It works on the front side. If you don't have this launched, you can see that this is downloading any changes or whatever in the file. And since the file was brand new, it's downloading them all. And... I can show you in real time how it works too, but we'll save that for another video. 
this makes things pretty easy. This way you always have this info available to you. Anyway, you know, with that, I really want to thank you guys for all being with me. Um, this is a really fun thing for me to do these videos. So uh, listen to the uh, exit here and you'll figure out how to see these things when they come out right away, okay? Now that's cool, huh? And the real cool part is all of a sudden all that interaction that you were doing with all these programs individually becomes a individual thing. You can have a centralized place for your log. That was the big uh, epiphany for me when I did this. Anyway, I want to thank each and every one of you that subscribed for doing it. Um, subscriptions, uh, the more subscriptions we have, the more reach we have in the community, and that's a big deal. Um, I really try to put together videos that you guys want. If you have any suggestions for videos, send them to me via email. My email is stu, spelled Sierra Tango Uniform, at ag6ag.org. And I would really, really love to hear from you. Um, you know, with that, uh, again, I'll give the pitch to subscribe. Any comments or questions, make them down below. Any suggestions, send me an email. I check my email all the time. Um, questions get answered hopefully in about a day or two. Um, you know, sometimes a little longer if you if you send me a real perplexer. But uh, I try to answer every question that you put out there. Anyway, with that, 73, everybody, and thanks for watching. This is Stu, AG6AG, saying, gosh, I really hope to hear you out there on the air.